momentum is everything. This game is over. Correa ends it. And as the series shifts to the bright lights of New York, who will the momentum favor? Anything can happen. Game three of the ALCS starts next on FS1. It sure does, and there's Garrett Cole. He's the guy that will get the start for the Houston Astros. He is unbeaten, dating back to May 22nd with a 1.66 ERA. It will be a tough task, but Luis Severino will be up to it. He was excellent in his start against Minnesota in the ALDS. Just his fifth start since coming back from injury here in the Bronx. And that's what we got on tap for you back here on the pregame show. First pitch coming your way in just a few seconds. So with this series tied at one, now we ask the big question, fellas, who's going to win and why? Frank Thomas. I'm going to say Houston edges the Yankees today because this offense knows this is their chance. They got to win this game. If not, there's a chance they won't make it out of the Bronx. So I see the offense stepping up today and win a very close one late in the game. I got to go to Houston because Garrett Cole, he's too good, man. He's throwing invisible pitches out there and he's hard to hit. Of course you're Houston. Shocking. I think Servi's going to have a great game, five plus. The offense will come alive and they don't call this the Bronx Zoo for nothing. I got the Yankees, baby. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's a smart chance to I thought you were doing this, man. Let's go. Seems like a good time to get it up. Man. The guys calling the game tonight, huh? Why don't we do that across the way? Joe Buck, John Smoltz, take it away. We'll see you later. All right, Kevin and guys, everybody, welcome to the ALCS, presented by Geico on FS1. And welcome to game three of this American League Championship Series with the series tied at a game apiece. And now welcome inside the broadcast booth everybody I'm Joe Buck along with the Hall of Famer John Smoltz he is the perfect guy to have sitting right here to talk about pitching and that's what we're going to do this pitching matchup they just went through the numbers I don't have to have to hit you with them again Garrett Cole has been absolutely automatic unbeatable. Uh, now he's got the shadows. The Yankees are going to have their hands full today. Yeah, they knew it coming into this series, but I think the reality sets in today. And if he can start out like he's been the last two months, it's going to be a long game for the Yankees. Garrett Cole's totally prepared. He has everything that you want to be a power pitcher. He knows how he wants to attack the hitters, and his numbers back it up. It's a 100 mile an hour fastball with a slider curveball. Good luck. And for Garrett Cole, all he wants to do is establish that edge that he has on the back of his jersey with that name in the first inning, and it could be a long game for the Yankees. Now let's talk about the other side. The guy that just gets overlooked in all this is Luis Severino, and if I'm Severino or if I'm Aaron Boone, his manager, I'm saying, oh, hey, don't forget about us. I mean, this was a 19-game winner last year. He went through two different injuries this year, but when he's right, he can light up a radar gun. Absolutely, and he can silence the right-handed power of this lineup that Houston so well well known for his fastball slider changeup is as good as anybody's. Yes, he hasn't pitched that much on the year, but he could be as fresh and ready to go to up to the task against Cole. They're not asking him to go seven innings, but what they need him to do is keep it close. And if you keep it close against the Astros, you as a Yankee fan or player thinks your bullpen's better than theirs. Almost worked in game two. That's what would be the formula in game three. Two things have been very busy this postseason: the Yankee bullpen and Ken Rosenthal. Kenny is out there by the Yankees bullpen. Ken. Thanks Joe. The Yankees bullpen worked seven and two thirds innings in game two. And as Joe, John said they figure to be busy again tonight behind Luis Severino. Such a strategy comes with risk. But the Yankees have built toward this moment all season. Not once did the regular season did Aaron Boone use a reliever three consecutive days. Once the Yankees had their big division lead in September Boone was able to rest his primary relievers and since the season ended the Yankees twice have had four consecutive days off. Now the possibility of a rain out tomorrow complicates matters creating a scenario in which these teams might play four games in four days but unleashing the bullpen in October that has been the Yankees plan all along. Now over to Tom Verducci. Well thanks Ken you know in the words of Aaron Boone the Yankees hitters are savages in the box. Well that's the clean version anyway. The postseason version they're even tougher. They're seeing more pitches. They're fouling off more pitches. In game two they had 29 foul balls against Justin Verlander the most by any team against any pitcher this postseason. So the game plan today against Garrett Cole it's the same. Extend at bats. 
count every foul ball because every foul ball, especially with two strikes, is a little victory. Joe. All right, Tom, thank you. Thank you to Ken. Let's set the stage and then let's raise the curtain on this game. If you've got an axe to grind, well, the Yankees and Astros, they know what you're thinking about. Carlos Correa's walk off home run tied the series at one. And on the hill today, two guys that can chop some wood. It's ALCS game three next on FS1. are no different than you if you worked in the city how are you going to get out to the Bronx and get out to Yankee Stadium however you got here we're glad you're here and if you're checking us out on FS1 settle in this should be fun and at least here early shouldn't be a lot of offense that's what Luis Severino has in mind and the same for AJ Hinch and his starter Garrett Cole because of those shadows. Here's the lineup for the Astros. George Springer leads it off. Big home run in game two to tie it. Jose Altuve, Michael Brantley. Alex Bregman stays in that cleanup spot. Yuli Gurriel moves up to give Bregman a little more protection. Jordan Alvarez, the rookie DH, slides down one. Then Carlos Correa, the hero in game two. Josh Reddick is in right, and Martin Maldonado does the catching he bats tonight on the mound is Luis Severino he is making his eighth postseason start there are his numbers this season that's because he had two separate injuries and he worked his 12 innings during the regular season fires a strike into Springer well the hitters will be challenged early somewhat of a shadows that will probably be gone by the third inning but they'll be challenged because both pitchers command their fastball left side couple of hops Urshela one down Springer hustled all the way and by the way when we showed George Springer the other night limping talked to A.J. Hinch about it he was just cramping up he's been sick he was on some meds he was dehydrated. There's nothing wrong with him and he just showed it with his 90 foot sprint down to first. That'll bring in Jose Altuve. Well for Severino he made a change with his glove you see his glove at the side of his body when he delivers. Altuve jumps him left center field back at the drag at the wall it's gone. Jose Altuve on the first pitch goes deep with one out here in the first inning of game three and the Astros jump out in front for Garrett Cole. Well Tuve never sees a pitch he doesn't like and he got a slider that didn't spin real well for Severino. And the young man knows the postseason he knows how to hit and he knows who's on the mound for his team. An early run is huge to keep this crowd at a kind of a question mark throughout the game. Look at that. 12 home runs down in the postseason for a guy who's 5'6, 168. And you detailed how he gets every bit of his 5'6 inch frame into the swing, and he jumped Luis Severino for a one out home run. Batter is Brantley and two quick strikes on him. Michael two for nine in this series six for twenty eight this postseason. Three eleven hitter during the regular year and kind of a under the radar free agent signing but a big one for the Astros this past offseason. Still 0 two. Well in a league where you know strikeouts and home runs and walks. Brantley doesn't mind hitting with two strikes. He's not bothered by it because mechanically he's sound. 
and he can get the barrel to bat to just about anywhere. That's why he's hitting over 300 with two strikes, which is a rarity in today's game. Oh. That is the 17th inning. This is that Severino has worked this year, and that's the first home run he's allowed. He's one and one. 12 innings, six, six hits, regular season, no decision, four strong innings at Minnesota in the clincher game three. Well, he's been good. The only question is how much has he stored up for this game, meaning how long can he go with the short amount of times he's been out on the mound and an eight day rest. For a guy who's fresh, eight day rest is not as big a bonus as a guy who's logged 200 plus innings and gets to this point with an eight day rest. Yeah, if you're Severino, you want more work. Yes, absolutely. You want to get out there because you're just beginning your year. He worked in and out of a lot of trouble against Minnesota, made some unbelievable pitches with the bases loaded, nobody out to the tune of why he didn't give up any runs. He's facing a different team offensively than the team he faced in Minnesota. All three. Now a full count. I know you can't fall in love with a radar gun. It doesn't tell the whole story, but for a guy like Severino who had rotator cuff inflammation, then a lat strain, hitting 98 miles an hour against the Twins is a good sign. What's he going to get Brantley here with a full count, one out, a run home? All four. He walked him, and it was not a 3 2 fastball. Let's go back to the home run by Altuve. Well, you can see the slider. It did not move at all. And a guy that you know you're going to face when he's swinging the first pitch, you have to make a better pitch than that. And Altuve absolutely crushed it. Yeah, that's a big part of this park. He's got the Crawford boxes to try to dial in at home, but he just hit that ball a long way. Closest mark on the wall out there is 399, and he got it into the back right corner at 420 off his bat into the Astro bullpen. Here's Bregman. Severino's had Bregman's number. <laughs> Coming into this matchup, one for 10. Bregman comes into this ball game hitting 318 over the postseason one for five in this series as the Yankees have been careful with him he walked twice in game two walked once in game one well that's sad. the discipline of Alex Bregman against right handed pitchers I had to check this again it's just unbelievable how he just doesn't swing much he's looking for one particular pitch usually doesn't miss it. But he will not expand the zone. He's not afraid to get the two strikes. And he's daring the pitcher to pitch him in. A ball and two strikes. Look at DJ LeMahieu with glasses on. As he looks over across the infield and then more toward the shortstop, he's got glare behind the shortstop's arm like a hitter would with the batter's eye behind a pitcher's arm. Yeah, last thing he wants to do is see a pickoff throw go by him. So he's trying to make sure he can do everything he can to cut that glare down. You got the sunshine it is crystal clear and then all those white shirts in the background. Here comes a one two to Bregman. Fought it off. Nothing wrong with the velocity here in the first inning for Severino. No the only thing that you worry about as a pitcher with eight days off is your touch pitch. The change is going to be very important for Severino it hasn't quite. He's thrown him down. He hasn't hit with any of them, and that slider is going to be crucial. So you want velocity, you can deal with adrenaline. Sliders, you don't want to deal with that adrenaline because you want the ball to break. You want touch, you want feel.
Bradley at first. Oh no. See there's that change up a little bit firmer than he normally throws it at 90 miles an hour but the depth of it is what's so important. He has simplified his delivery and simplified his mechanics to where hopefully if he stays healthy I can promise you he will be in the running for a, a Cy Young one year. That's how good this man can be. Two two. Ball three. There's ninety eight, but it's ball three. And that looked like an overthrow. Yeah, he's learned from his previous experiences. Of course, now he's been under the fire, not a ton in the postseason, coming in with a one and two postseason record, but he's learned how to control his emotions and be more like a regular season start. That took foul. But the Astros uncharacteristically early in this postseason were expanding the strike zone. They've gotten back to trying to be more disciplined. That's what makes their lineup so unique. One of the hardest lineups in baseball to strike out. And A.J. was talking about some of those at bats. And every time you get to this time of the year you're going to have some of your guys lose it a little bit and some guys are going to be locked in. Severino's had Bregman's number. He has to come to him with a 3 2 count. What a good at bat. Who knows what it will produce, but he's making Severino work hard with one home, one on, and one out here in the first. This will be the ninth pitch of the at bat. Broken bat, another foul ball. So he's seen the kitchen sink already. It's like two and three at bats worth off of Severino. Now I don't know how long Severino will be in the game, but if you're going to face a guy like Bregman three times, you almost have shown him everything you want without a runners in scoring position, and he's seen everything. So that's a great sign for Bregman because in this battle, and the more pitches he sees, the better it's this at bat's going to be. At some point Severino is going to have to trust a 3 2 fastball and that's what Bregman's banking on right now because he's going to be able to do damage off that pitch because he's so good as are most of the guys in this game off of fastballs. Five foul balls in this at bat for Alex Bregman trying to put one between the lines. Make it six. So he's fouled off every pitcher's pitch. He's still looking for that one over the middle, middle third of the plate. Severino threw that ball up and away. More than likely would have been a strike, and he fouls it away. So this is the cat and mouse game you're talking about here in the first inning. You want your crowd in the game. You don't want to give the Houston Astros a bigger leash with the guy that's on the mound that has yet to take the mound in Garrett Cole. Severino wins that battle. And what a battle that was here at the start of the ball game. Well, he beat him at his own game. The fastball middle up, and Bregman normally tries to swing over that ball, actually swung under that ball, and Severino wins a big battle. Now, Yuli Guriel. But the struggles of Jordan Alvarez, 22 year old rookie, 0 for 7, 5 strikeouts in this LCS. Guriel well, no. is moved up to hit behind Bregman, and he takes ball one. And he loves hitting off of right handed pitchers and doesn't mind hitting off of Severino. Good breaking ball hitter, stays on the ball, good high ball hitter, and of course, his power has gone up this year. Tore its second half. 
That caught the crew chief on the foul tip. That's Jeff Nelson behind the plate. Joined by Dan Bellino, Kerwin Danley, Mark Carlson, Marvin Hudson, and Corey Blazer as Hudson and Welke switch spots. Welke in the city looking at replays. Hudson out here working left field. Down two and one, and this will be at least a 26 pitch first inning for Severino. And the reason why that's important, I mean, the Astros are going to want to try to create a, as many long at bats as possible. Even though their bullpen is their strength, they know the longer this series goes, the more bullpen pieces that Aaron Bone has to use. A good pitch there catches the bottom part of the strike zone outside corner strike two. has no play in an infield hit perfectly placed with Gregorius over in the hole a routine ground ball goes as an infield hit and the first inning continues for Houston yeah those are the ones that hurt right you give it off the bat probably exit velocity under 90 and because of the defensive alignment the inning is still alive which means more pitches and a potential bigger inning for the Astros. Well, Jordan Alvarez, last time we saw him, he struck out with a chance to end the ball game in extra innings in Houston. Was frustrated, slammed his bat down and broke it. AJ Hinch went over to him after he got back to the dugout. I'll tell you what he said. Here's the first pitch. Whoa. He said I wanted to see why he broke his bat why he was so frustrated. And he said if he's just frustrated because he made an out then I'm frustrated with him. But it's because he deviated from his plan. And Jordan was honest about that and AJ said OK I understand why you're mad. Here he is on one and oh well, and that's, that's that. outside. Pretty close pitch two and oh and that's easy to do in the postseason. People would never understand sitting at home. The difference between a regular season game and an approach like this young man gets called up and lights the world on fire to getting off your game plan in the postseason because the pressure and intent pressure and tension makes you do things you wouldn't normally do. And so he's learning here on the fly under the extreme circumstances of power pitching great ability to neutralize the strength that this man possesses at the plate. 2 0 pitch. Ball three. Ball three, three and oh with Correa next. And that little infield hit could turn into something huge for the Astros here. In this pivotal game three, they're already on the phone. The Yankees are. That's Rothschild to the bullpen. I think this is a green light situation. 3 0 fastball if he gets it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Took it right down the chute, 3 and 1. All right, so it wasn't a green light situation, but nonetheless. Alvarez has the ability to really damper this crowd with his power in a short porch to right field. Ball now. That is a check and ball four. And the bases are loaded with Correa, the hero, from two nights ago walking in. He was the game two hero in 2017. As he ended the game, first of all, he gets a base hit for an RBI double in his first at bat. Makes the defensive play to cut down LeMahieu with the plate and the ball off Altuve. 
And then the game winning home run that came in the 11th. And the Astros, John, have to hope that he's back because he is a big piece. Prior to that game, A.J. Hinch wondering what in the world was wrong with his swing and his at bats. He didn't like them. He loved game two. Yeah, and he said, Correa said he fixed something in batting practice that morning. He felt a click, and that's what he felt good about that game. He told the guys he felt like he was going to do something special. And he's got a chance to do something real special here in this hostile crowd at home with little anticipation of uh oh in the crowd with the bases loaded two outs and the bullpen getting going for the Yankees. The left hander Tyler Lyons is getting loose but right now all of the attention is on Severino and Correa. Let me just tell you something what that heartbeat feels like for Lyons when he doesn't anticipate that's going to be the call in the first inning. Your heart is going a mile. I mean just a hundred miles a minute trying to get ready. For an emergency kind of entrance if he's needed. Oh. You mentioned the fastball hitting teams right the Houston Astros and New York three of the best teams. Ranking wise against the fastball and that's what Severino has not been able to do is get a secondary pitch over first. Respecting the Astros ability to hit the fastball on the first pitch. Correa. Oh no. He went around a ball and a strike. We've got the left handed hitting Reddick on deck. Lions getting ready in a hurry. Just kind of get the feeling that this game is hanging in the balance here with Garrett Cole about to take the mound for the Astros and we're only in the first. Strike two. See that's been his best pitch this inning has been the fastball. And he has tried to Im implement the other pitches and he's gotten behind the count and he has to rely on his fastball which has been playing around 98 miles an hour to get him out of this gym. Pitch number 36. Severino. Correa. Shit in the inning. Labor Torres. And the Astros struggles with runners in scoring position, especially with two out continue. He's 5'6, heart of a lion, Jose Altuve. They love him in Houston. He's one of the best in the game. Puts the Astros up here in the first of game three. And Garrett Cole rolls out. Here's the lineup for the Yankees. DJ LeMahieu, Aaron Judge, Brett Gardner. The top three in the middle. Encarnacion, Yankees need to get him going. Glaber Torres, D.D. Gregorius. And then the bottom three, Sanchez, Urshela, and Aaron Hicks. Gets his first start of this postseason. Here's Garrett Cole since May 27. 24 starts. He's gone 18 and 0. His ERA in that stretch 1.66. It's really hard to describe and even to bring into context what kind of run this is on. You have to go back to the 1910s, 12, to even have a comparison. Ooh. So really, what the Yankees are hoping to do is you can't wait them out. You got to pick out pitches and hopefully get lucky. By being aggressive early, because if he gets you to two strikes, it's over in theory. Oh. Ball and a strike. We could flood you with numbers and history, but let's just settle in and let you watch Garrett Cole take on the Yankees up by a run. And for whatever it's worth. His highest ERA is his first inning, but that isn't something to be proud of if you're the Yankees. It's only 3.5. And for Garrett Cole, there's always an opportunity between a pitcher and a hitter. When the hitter steps in the box, he either knows he's got the edge or the pitcher has the edge. And it's the Yankees' job today to try to take chip away at some of that edge. Because I guarantee you, Garrett Cole feels like he on the mound has the edge over any hitter that steps in the box. Two two right back up the middle off the bag for a base hit. 
There's Mayhew, number two in the league in hitting this year. What a first year in pinstripes. He makes the Yankees go. I mean, now you start dealing with the middle of that lineup, but he is such a patient hitter and really uses what the pitcher does as his advantage, meaning if it's velocity, he shortens a stroke, goes up the middle, puts it in play, and gets a base hit. Batter now is Judge. Homered in game two. Wide open right side of the infield. Mayhew is going to think about it and not test Reddick. How about that by Judge by design? I think so. It's there anytime he wants it. And what better time to create chaos here in the home park when your crowd's going crazy? He takes a fastball and goes the other way. An easy base hit. You don't have to hit it hard that way. And now the question is going to be early on in the game against a Garrett Cole with Gardner, an untraditional third hitter. Will he bunt? We mentioned the numbers on the year. It's so difficult to put together a ton of hits against Garrett Cole. They've already had two of them. I know the bunt usually goes to die, but I would, I would, I would anticipate a bunt here. I would not. Good call. I think it has as much to do with the guy at the plate the year he's had, and the way Encarnacion is swinging the bat behind him. Encarnacion, 0 for 8 in this series. Gardner skies one into center and Springer shielding his eyes one out. So Gardner does not advance the runners and it's first and second one out now for Encarnacion. I understand the theories that go today I really do and they want three cracks at runners in scoring position but to put pressure on a great pitcher in this time of the season is what ideally you want to do and he had the perfect hitter but the Yankees and their offense and their ability to slug to your point Joe is they're looking for more than that. But hey whatever no right or wrong answer and Gardner did not advance the runners swinging the bat now it's Encarnacion and he skies one on the infield his struggles continue. Altuve with the infield fly rule in effect two out. And this inning is going to fall to the young Glaber Torres. Our player resume is sponsored by Indeed in this area of the lineup. Gardner in the three spot. Encarnacion is hitting cleanup. Sanchez is down in the order at seven. But those are three big bats from a club that won 103 games during the regular year that are struggling overall in the postseason. Yeah they're struggling because they face some unbelievable arms with velocity. But this guy doesn't care. He is absolutely ice water. And lives for these kind of moments. Aggressive first pitch swinging. He will try to do damage on the first swing normally. Well that's that. His early count swing is different than his late count swing. In other words, he has two different approaches. He'll get violent and have a little bit more miss in, in his swing early, and then he'll get more contact oriented late and not sacrifice so much power from it. It's an amazing gift. Two on, two out. Two and zero. The count on Torres for coverage of this game in Spanish. Please tune to Fox Deportes. Pretty good block there by Martin Maldonado. Maldonado. Maldonado does a nice job with Garrett Cole, and we got a chance to talk to him before the game and pick his brain about what it's like and how many gloves he's gone through. That was my first question. He said, "This is my second glove. Guy who throws 100 miles an hour, break it in fast." 
The two out. Three and zero. Oh. That was kind of an awkward catch of that pitch by Maldonado. That's because he got crossed up. He went through his series of signs, and Cole actually went quicker before the signs were finished. And I don't think he quite saw him and crossed him up. And he says, "Okay, here's what we're doing now." And Cole steps off for a moment, so Torres steps out. Three zero. Base is loaded. And D.D. Gregorius, who hit a grand slam in Game Two of the Division Series, will walk in, serenaded by the crowd. With his teammates hopeful he can figure out Cole. Two hits and a walk in the inning. And they could be going over signs right now. Yeah, typically what happens in these situations when runners are on, they're looking for location, they're looking for patterns, and the catcher's going to give touches before he gives signs, which is going to give an indicator sometimes of what they're changing their signs to. You'll see nowadays pitchers take off their hat. Some of them will put something in their hat to even know what quadrant or number is what they're going with to try to decode the signs. They do it all year. Paranoia runs rampant in Major League Baseball these days. So even with nobody on, they throw down multiple signs. Now the bases are loaded. And Gregorius is up for New York. To the right side, Altuve gets a true bounce. And each side leaves the bases loaded in the first. Astros got a home run from Altuve and lead one to nothing into the second of game three. Twist most powerful. By steal a base, steal a taco, only a Taco Bell. And by Midas, trust the Midas touch. Luis Severino threw 36 pitches in the first inning. That is a career high. He's 25 years old. He's making his 96th career start. Regular and postseason. And so he did strand the bases loaded after giving up a home run to Altuve. Evidently, there's an issue with the replay monitors, I'm told. And I guess they came back up. So we're good to go. Second inning with Reddick, Maldonado, and Springer coming up. See if Severino now can settle in. And the same for Cole, who, by the way, only threw 14 pitches despite the Yankees loading the bases in the bottom of the first. One of the things I thought the Yankees would do is be aggressive early, and they were. They missed some pitches, popped them up. For the most part, you're trying to make life as miserable as you can for Garrett Cole, who's come in here absolutely rolling. Reddick. First start of this series takes a strike. AJ Hinch very good at communicating who's going to start the following day. There's no one. Oh. That's down. And before game one, AJ Hinch thought that Aaron Boone would go with Paxton in game one, so he had already told Reddick that he wasn't going to play. But to add to that, Aaron then had Tanaka in game two, and AJ said, Oh, by the way, I told you game one, well, you're not going to start game two either. And he said Reddick was fine with it. Good swing there. One ball, two strikes, the count. He's struggling a bit with a bat, one for 10 this postseason with five strikeouts. But he likes hitting against this guy, Severino. Here's the one two. Well, on the year, he would pre prefer hitting fastballs off of right handed pitchers, and most left handers would. But he holds his own against sliders and curveballs, so he's able to track it. 
into right. I'd say he likes hitting off Severino. Goodbye. Second deck. Josh Reddick has made it 2 0 Houston here in the second. Another flat slider by Severino, and I mentioned he holds his own against the sliders and curveballs with his swing. That's a perfect recipe to launch the ball in the air. Severino, when he establishes the fastball down, that is usually a good thing for his slider, but he's gotten on the side of a couple of them with his hand. So with one home, the batter is Maldonado, who takes Whoa. down and away ball one. So the lead is doubled. Solo shots in the first and second. Two for five this postseason is Maldonado. And I'm with you. Every time there's a swing and a miss or somebody looks overmatched, it's with the fastball. fastball. And the slider is just getting punished. Yeah, sometimes game plans are great. You got to be prepared and have an opportunity to trust your stuff, but you might have to adjust your own game plan if you don't have the feel for that particular pitch that you're trying to get them out with. There it is again, strike two. Came over from the Cubs on the trading deadline day, the 31st, for infielder, outfielder Tony Kemp. And he's been back there to receive Garrett Cole during this run. A strikeout on 97. One out here in the second, back to the homer. And there's that rolling breaking ball that just stayed right in the zone. And here at Yankee Stadium, I mean most left handers are going to know when they hit it anyways it's the right handers who sometimes go the other way that are surprised when they hit a homer going there but that one was crushed. Verlander loved it back to the top of the order and Springer. Ball oh. Let's see if that. Slider sees the light of day anymore. That was a change at 88, and the count evens at a ball and a strike. It's hard. I mean, we talk about people ask me, "What's it like?" You know, what what's Severino thinking going up against Garrett Cole? Vice versa. You try to not think about it, but you you really have to maintain. One run at a time, bare minimum, against a great pitcher. Because if you give a, a pitcher who's on a roll too big of a leash, all two, it's much more difficult task to try to tag a, a guy on a roll for four or five or six runs to try to beat him. And it's amazing about the game of baseball that you play for so long at 162 games a year. It really is your next day momentum or your next day chances rely on your starting pitcher. I mean, that's the way it used to be. And you could tell how confident this team is when Verlander and Cole are on the mound. Hiccup is when Verlander went on short rest. Yep. They were confident heading back to Houston for game five of the division series with Cole on the mound, and they were certainly confident when you read the quotes, albeit after the ball game, that Verlander started in game two. There's the pitch. Down and away, and that was one of his best. Strikeout number three and out number two here in the second. Bring in Altuve. Who became the first Astro to hit a first inning home run in an LCS game since Craig Biggio in 2004, game seven of the NLCS against Jeff Supan of the Cardinals. You know what's interesting about pitchers is usually if you give up a homer on that pitch, you want to come right back the first time you face that guy and show you're not afraid to throw it again. Let's see if Severino goes to the fastball or applies that principle with a better slider here on the first pitch. Went with the fastball. 
You never want a hitter to feel like you've taken away a pitch from him early in a game. In this pitching matchup, early feels late. Yep. To uh, channel my inner yogi. When you're facing Garrett Cole, you're down 2 0 now in the second, and it just has a different feel than it would with virtually anybody else on the mound for the opposition. That's the kind of role he's been on. It's historic. Here's a 2 0. Got him on a little comebacker, but it's going to go for a base hit as Severino just flat out missed it. Looking for the short hop, and that had enough spin on it or took a funny bounce. And Severino lets one get past him. Yeah, he knows he's got to make this play. I mean, this is not taken for granted, but this right here, he did take for granted that that was going to be an easier play when he had time to get over and get in front of it. He finishes in such a good position that that's just a little bit of a mental error there. That's not nerves. That's just a little bit of a I got time more time to get in front and make the play. It's an error on Severino and that means that he has to deal with a left handed hitting Brantley. Michael walked his first time. What do you see down there Tom. Well, I, John mentioned this. I think the Astros have pretty much taken away the changeup. They're just not swinging at that. They took it on balance in that first inning. So Severino is left with a slider that's inconsistent and becoming a fastball pitcher right now. One swing and miss on his secondary pitches in this game so far. That was on the strikeout by Springer. Now nothing in two on Brantley. Second time in a row, Brantley. Has gotten 0 and 2. First time worked a walk. Pretty close. Tried to catch Altuve napping over at first. Very close. See, Bramley talked to the umpire and asked if that last pitch before he just swung was up. Obviously, it was called a strike, so that allowed him, in his mind, to think about swinging at that pitch out of the zone. And he turned around and asked him if that was going to be a strike. He has such an awareness of the strike zone, it's uncanny. Playing in his first LCS. Injured in 2016 with Cleveland. 0 2 runner goes. Throw down not made in a stolen base for Altuve. And now base hit could add to a 2 0 lead. A Houston team that was number eight in the American League with 68 steals. They get a stolen base here with two out in the second. I think he's going to need a new pair of pants when he gets time to go in there. He ripped them. All in. That's down and in. Came in so fast. That was the only way he could slow down. He had to rip him. Parachute was trying to come out, but it didn't. <laughs> they got plenty of pants. Two two struck him out. But the Astros got a run in the first and a home run by Altuve. And now a blast into the seats and right by Reddick. Two nothing Astros after one and a half. Game three.
Welcome back to the ALCS presented by Geico on FS1. Packed house, beautiful day in the Bronx. 2 nothing now, Houston. Whoa. And a fastball misses outside. Were you surprised when Martin Maldonado told us that Cole, who doesn't throw a lot in the bullpen before a start, barely throws between starts when he does? He can, at least according to Maldonado, hit triple digits right out of the chute with the first throw he makes. Yeah, he's got a gift, and that arm is certainly something that is that gift. And every once in a while, he'll get underneath that fastball, but when he stays on top, that pitch right there is very difficult for a lot of hitters. He's very comfortable pitching up in the zone. He's got two quadrants up. We haven't seen the curveball slider much because he's pumping in fastballs and occasional changeup, but about 13 miles an hour difference between the high and the low velocity. Gary Sanchez is one for nine in this ALCS. Two hits with eight strikeouts this postseason. And I thought the last couple of bats were getting better and better. Unfortunately, he was fouling them back instead of putting them in play. He put some great swings in that at bat. He eventually struck out. Here's a 2 2 to Sanchez. Fly ball down the left field line. Long run. Correa had the better angle and has the out. So if you're looking at home trying to figure out what makes this guy such a monster and this virtual reality will tell you that the fastball is the top and then the curveball is the bottom and you see the difference that's a decision making problem and nightmare for a hitter. They're looking at a ball coming out of the same slot and then the depth and the change of direction is so good. That's why he has struck out double digits and it seems like 100 games in a row. He is having the best year of his career at the best time of his career. A free agent to be. He grew up in Southern California as Gio Urshela stands in. Born in Newport Beach. Speculation is the Angels, who have needed pitching for a while now, to match with that offense, and in particular Mike Trout, will go heavy after Cole. Oh. He actually grew up a Yankee fan. His dad was a Yankee fan. His dad introduced the Yankees to him as a kid. He was at old Yankee Stadium he said five or six times and was a first round pick by the Yankees out of high school back in 08. Here's a fly ball into center Springer back two out. So he didn't sign with the Yankees went to UCLA and there's Garrett at 11 years old in the 2001 World Series in a place that I think was unmatched across baseball old Yankee Stadium. And Cole then three years later becomes the first overall pick by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Well it's been an amazing transformation to a different philosophy in Pittsburgh where sinkers were king ground balls is what they wanted he didn't strike out that many or at least as many as people thought he should. Good swing by Hicks comes over to Houston where he's. Former teammate Charlie Morton had a transformation with the Astros. He saw what it did for him. Comes over in the trade, basically turns into this beast. And whether or not Houston can re sign him, he's at the perfect timing of his career, at the peak of his career, where he's a game changer for an organization. That's over the inside corner, Kenny. Well, Garrett Cole is a guy the Yankees had a shot at once, Joe, as you described, but they had a shot at him again after the 2017 season. Remember those trade talks with the Pirates? They refused to give up Miguel Andujar as well as Clint Frazier. That was the ask by the Pirates. And at the time, Cole wasn't who he is now, and Andujar was coming off a year in which he was second in the American League Rookie of the Year voting. But I think the Yankees might want that one back. Yeah, and I, you could see that if he started to scratch the surface of what he's doing right now, he might have never gotten out of the Bronx again. But free agency looms. Astros are 19 and 2 this season when Cole has a lead of two runs or more. Houston 35 and 5 in his short time with Houston in that situation. That's oh, down no. and in. And the count evens at two and two on Aaron Hicks. Well that shot we just showed of Brent Strom. He has been one of the most underrated pitching coaches. I don't think he's underrated anymore because of what he's been able to do 
with that staff they're known for throwing the breaking ball and slider and spinning it about as good as anybody. And then you mix in a 97 98 mile an hour fastball. Aha. 100 but it missed three and two. Hicks fouls it away. I think it was you or Tom that asked Garrett Cole in our meeting before game two, well, do you just let that fastball eat, as they say in the big leagues? And he said, no, I don't. I hold a little bit back. Yeah. So they're not throwing as hard as he can. Right. He's got an easy motion. Looks like a little stress. And a lot of those, you know, and that's the only thing the Yankees can do is by piling up pitches, they got to pile up foul balls, and then they can't miss the one pitch that he'll give you. Easier said than done. When Cole and Verlander are on the mound, it almost seems like the infielders don't have much to do because it's either a fly ball or a strikeout with these two great pitchers for the Astros. Good battle here. Good at bat turned in by Aaron Hicks. And now time called. Shut down from the beginning of August, literally, until this LCS. And he is fouling off these high deliveries and making Cole throw more pitches. This will be the ninth pitch of the bat coming up. And so the biggest dilemma for a pitcher in this situation is he's not really catching up to your fastball. You run the risk of him at bat speed running into a slider you don't execute. So do you keep pounding the fastballs and hope to get a swing and miss. And that's what you run the risk of right there. See that he was on that pitch. And that was the breaking ball and you know it's the hardest thing to read sometimes as a pitcher is oh fastball he's going to he's going to finally time it up he's going to time it up well when you're following it straight back or off to the side it's not necessarily the case. Another 3 2. A walk. What a good at bat by Hicks. He earned that walk. And the second walk of the ballgame with a Mayhew walking in. 18 game win streak. That's an American League single season record. 11 consecutive games now with double digit strikeouts. That's a big league record. 73 consecutive innings with a strikeout. It's the best in 61 and then struck out 25 hitters in his two starts against Tampa Bay in the division series. That's number two to Gibson back in the World Series in 68. There's another one up the middle. The Mayhew is two for two. And all of a sudden the tying runs are on and the go ahead run is coming up. And the guy walking in is named Aaron Judge. His name's Aaron Judge, and they're going to have to decide how they want to defend this for AJ. Because if they leave that second base wide open again, it's a run. I mean, I know the job of Aaron Judge is to hit the ball in the air and hit homers. There's the defense. Judge singled through that wide open right side his first time. They're a little less wide open over there this time. But he homered in game two. A ball and a strike.
Yankees are creating some stress early for Garrett Cole. And that's a good thing when he's pitching on the road. You want your crowd into it as much as possible. Good pitch. Judge couldn't connect. A ball and two strikes. That was the best breaking ball of the night. That was absolutely even in the strike zone unhittable and now he can do whatever he wants he can climb the ladder with a fastball up or he can continue to break that ball off the plate and see if he can get judge leaning out and swinging at that pitch he has a lot on the year. Struck him out. And the first strike out of the game for Garrett Cole. Comes at the expense of Aaron Judge and comes with two on and two out. Four, five, six hitters for Houston up two nothing on home runs by Altuve and Reddick. Bregman takes a strike from Severino. Watch as this series goes on. I've been watching Bregman be patient against right-handers and take a lot of pitches, work the count. I think at some point there's going to be a vital. Scenario where he jumps the first pitch and changes that scouting report. Drills the outside corner, nothing in two. Bregman had a long at bat, struck out his first time up, one for six in the series. From the hole, Gregorius. Long throw and true. One away. T Mobile is introducing its newest, most powerful signal ever. No signal goes further, no signal is more reliable. Whether you're home or away, T Mobile is with you. The Yankees are home, the Astros are away. One out, Yuli Guriel. Singled on the infield. Facing Severino. To the left side again, broken bat. Gregorius, two down. The one thing about pitching from inning to inning, you know, people talk about how do you make in game adjustments? Well, one thing you start recognizing what's your best pitch and try to go to it more. But how do you change the slider and the tilt on your slider? Well, the only way you can do that is in between innings in your warm up pitches. And then mentally, you got to trust that your mechanics are going to be solid and that you can't worry about hanging one or leaving one flat. Unfortunately, the two he's given up were homers. Chad Green is now watching with the rest of us. Severino needs an economical inning. He's face two, retired two, deals with Alvarez. And hits the inside corner. Should be handled and should be the first one, two, three inning of the ball game. And it is for Severino, a six pitch inning. He needed that. Part of the order coming up for the Yankees down two. Bottom of the third inning, three, four, five hitters for New York. Two nothing Astros on home runs by Altuve and Reddick. A breaking ball from Garrett Cole is in for a strike. Nice enough to join us is Justin Verlander from the corner of his dugout, neatly tucked away from all of his teammates, so they don't give him trouble. Uh, what do you see so far from your uh, compatriot there? I mean, they're giving him good at bats, but he's doing a great job making pitches when he has to. Um, you know, this lineup's uh, pretty relentless, and uh, when they get it, when they get in the rhythm, it makes it tough. But but he's been able to kind of bear down, and when he needs to make pitches, he did. I haven't seen you since your start in game two. How'd you feel after that one? Uh, pretty exhausted. Uh, you know, it was a grind, um, but uh, you know, pretty pretty happy uh, to be able to come away with the W as a team. 
when you say a, a lineup is relentless I mean this this would be one of the guys that I would think of Gardner I, he can become a tough out especially when you get two strikes on him right? absolutely I mean it, pretty much every one of these guys uh, I mean they can really bear down and, and work your pitch count I mean you look at the bat Hicks had against Garrett um, you know those 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 things go overlooked um, but but in the big scheme of things in terms of a start as a starting picture they wear on you a little bit and you get a little frustrated so you got to you got to you got to keep your calm and just keep making pitches as much as you can. Gardner strikes out. Uh, last question. I mean, you're always honest, and, and you're headed to the Hall of Fame someday. I, have you ever seen anybody get on a roll like Garrett Cole? No, no, I haven't. Yourself uh, included, by the way. <laughs> no, uh, it's been uh, it's been pretty special, man. This guy's uh, a special breed, and uh, it's been a pleasure to watch him pitch. Uh, the, this this stretch he's been on. Well, uh, we appreciate you joining us from the dugout. We'll sure, let you quick. go back to you. Well, I don't know. I feel weird. No, no, I'm good. <laughs> you're good to talk or you're done? No, I'm, I, I, you're I'm, I'm going to enjoy watching Garrett some more. Okay, good. That's very politically good. <laughs> thanks for not hurting our feelings. All right, guys. Thanks for having me as always. All right. Yep. See you guys. Justin Verlander, who every time we have a game with one of his teams, whether it was Detroit or now Houston, is nice to jump on. And with two out and nobody on, here's Glaber Torres. While we were oh, talking, no. Gardner got overpowered with a fastball, and Encarnacion is now 0 for 10. Broke his bat, I think, on a ground ball to second. Yeah, he broke his bat, and it won't be the last one if Garrett Cole continues to fine-tune his fastball command. That's the one thing just a Woo. little bit off because you, when you get it as a starting pitcher and you get locked in like he has on a roll, as a visitor or as an opponent, you're just hoping you can get to him before he gets locked in because when he does, it's oh, pretty no, much over. Dan. That's a swing for Torres, and that puts him in the hole one and two. He didn't agree with the call. See, he has lateral movement with the slider, okay? So that coming out of the same slot. Then he has the 12 to 6 break on the breaking ball. Those are two different ways that right handers have to see the pitch come out of his hand. 99 there, and. Without going overboard or jumping to conclusions, it looks like he is starting to yes. really settle in. And when he gets the feel on those breaking ball pitches, he can sweep it. He, can, he doesn't always have to be the same velocity. He has the touch to change the velocity and the shape. It wasn't a huge pickup, at least with regard to headlines. But when the Astros got Zach Greinke for four prospects they did two other deals one of which was getting Maldonado the catcher from the Cubs and that seems to be a real good marriage with Garrett Cole yeah, it does and he's been able to be back behind that plate for just about every one of them and another tribute to Torres 0 and 2 he gets it to 3 and 2 the two out foul balls usually for most starting pitchers who throw hard at times can get under your nerves a little bit because it's a pitch. It just eats up your pitch count. And at this time of the year, of course, for Garrett Cole, you just have to keep making those kind of pitches and not get frustrated by it or lead it to make you throw another pitch that the hitter actually wants you to throw. The other thing I found. Besides learning when you do these games and get to talk to managers and players about the personality and how prepared they are and the knowledge and the information. AJ talked about his ability to actually change nuances in his delivery. Speed it up a little bit pause a little bit create different feels. He's not just rearing back and letting it eat or letting it throw as hard as it can. A strikeout two in the inning three in the game. Yankees have their hands full as they thought they might here in game three a 14 pitch inning for Cole who leads to zip. All in home runs in the playoffs. Go John who is it? who's leading baseball in home runs in the playoffs here is uh, Correa he takes a strike from Severino. El Tubi. Hmm. It's a good call I'm going to I'm going to go with you on that he's got four. Is that right. Somebody tell you that? No, I just guessed. Here's strike two on Correa. 
I can't think of anybody else who's done more than Altuve. There's our interview guest talking to the starting pitcher Cole who is covering up his mouth while he dishes on the Yankee lineup. <laughs> well he knows there's cameras everywhere so yeah. they could pick up everything for Severino right now he would like to get into a little mini role and help Aaron Boone navigate the rest of this game. There's so much looming not only in this game but tomorrow and the uncertainty of weather and but the Yankees use their bullpen so much that any inning from this point on that Severino can give him is just going to help him make decisions and who he has to burn to finish the rest of the innings because that's not going to be a problem for the Houston Astros if their A stud pitchers continue to do what they've been doing all year shortens the game for A.J. Hinch. That strike three on a perfect pitch inside corner and Correa could not pull the trigger that strike out number five. Great pitch right here he hadn't shown this yet he hadn't gone in yet. And staying on playing with that fastball that just locks up the right handed batter Correa. And Severino starting to feel it a little bit now that his fastball has been really his best pitch. Made the mistake to this batter. He rolled a breaking ball over the plate. And Homer. Well, that stays away here, and that's ball one. Reddick hit one into the second deck down the line. His first time up to make it two nothing. After Altuve jumped the first pitch in the first inning, he saw as the second batter. See, when you have a changeup like Severino's, you really want them. To put that in play you're not really trying to throw it for a strike because you're anticipating they're sitting on fastball and when they go to attack what they think is a fastball that change up either gets a swing and a miss or a ground out so it's actually more of a action pitch you want them to put it in play and the Astros are taking it. That's pretty well hit down the line slicing into the corner foul straight to. Reddick had a good year 275 14 home runs 56 RBI's five stolen bases plays a good outfield. Nice piece to the puzzle for A.J. Hinch but did not start either of the first two games in Houston. Tied him up in a pop up. For Urshela two down. YouTube TV try it free. Martin Maldonado when we talked to him mainly about his starter tonight paid the home plate umpire Jeff Nelson. I think a very subtle compliment. All of these teams have scouting reports on umpires where they tend to go with their strike zones <laughs> how they work a game and he said Jeff Nelson is just very professional really takes his job. Seriously, doesn't mess around back there. And expects a good game called by Nelson, and uh, he's getting it. Yeah, today more than ever, umpire, umpires have been kind of conformed into one strike zone, which is a little unfortunate because everybody in the human factor has their own strike zone, and you got to know each umpire's strike zone. And what I mean by that is you know with all the technology and everything that we have it's a lot easier to kind of critique a strike zone from an umpire based on where the ball actually is to where he calls it but today with the stuff that these two guys have on the mound they can live more in the strike zone than most pitchers in the game. Pitch number 81's fouled away in that game three start at the twins in the division series Severino through 83 pitches. But he has settled in. And the Astros are 0 for 9 since the Reddick Homer leading off the second. And a lot less sliders out of Severino since that Homer. Well that's that. Full count. Clearly outside. Not swayed by this Yankee Stadium crowd, most of which is on its feet. 
looking for Severino's sixth strikeout of the game. And that caught Nelson. Second time he's been hit. And now a visit from Steve Donahue to make sure that Jeff is okay. He's a great one. Steve Donahue, who's been with this Yankee organization since the mid 80s. Good person, great trainer. And now Kerwin Danley comes down to check on the home plate umpire and crew chief. That catch him in the mask. Yeah. Straight on. And that's why they're checking him and why Steve was looking into the eyes. And they're making sure that that was not a mound visit. Right. And that's the signal by Jeff Nelson. There it is again off the bat of Maldonado. What a full swing. It's like a check swing, so that's why it just kind of skidded off the bat straight back. Didn't really slow down much at all. Two out, nobody on, and a high fly ball into left field. Back is Gardner on the track. It is off the wall. Maldonado into second with a double as Gardner was well, I don't think he read that ball really well off the bat he didn't and this ball was hit so high there's really not much wind at all and he just didn't pick it up off the bat playing shallow and he's trying to run when you when an outfielder turns his back he's going to run towards where he thinks it's going to be you can see twice checking where the wall is and then the ball just gets on the other side keeps almost fading away from Brett Gardner. Watch it again this ball hit off the bat had a chance I thought to leave and you see him pause and then he never really tracks it and because a catcher's running that was going to be an easy double and not so much a triple. Well this is a visit from Larry Rothschild. After the double by the number nine man and now the Astros could add to their lead with Springer about to dig in he's 0 for 2. If I had to guess what this conversation is is it's got to be about trusting your slider because when you think about a fastball hitter first pitch fastball hitter Springer is one of the best in the game leading off. So at some point he's going to have to be able to throw his secondary stuff to Springer. Big hole on the right side of the infield. Springer fouls it away 97 nothing wrong with the stuff I mean. So he's over the pitch count he had in game three of the division series trying to get through four which is what 83 pitches took him through against the twins four innings. Oh one. Boy it looks like Springer's trying to shoot that ball to right. Well he attacked him with two straight fastballs. Runner at second that's Baldonado does not run well a base hit to right would likely not score him unless it's hard hit and gets past judge. Oh, There's no. that slider much better. Such a weapon for Severino he needs that pitch to be effective. You ideally want to have your fingers behind the ball like you're throwing a fastball and then turn the baseball like you saw there and create spin that the hitter could not typically recognize. He struck Springer out on that pitch last time up. Springer took it. Now the one two. There one it is two. again. Two and two. And the Astros have done a nice job in this game. Anything down that they recognize is not a fastball they have pretty much left away. To not swinging. Two 
2 2 now. Oh. That was the best take of the day and the best slider he's thrown. That could be frustrating for a pitcher knowing that you just threw your best slider. So now with the base open, the bullpen is up. That one right there normally that would get a swing more times out of not. Great take. Chad Green's ready to go. If the inning continues past Springer. Struck him out. Six in the ball game for Severino keeping his team in it. Bottom of the fourth at Yankee Stadium, 2-0 Houston. Garrett Cole deals a strike right on cue. And that's the way the bottom of the fourth inning begins. Didi Gregorius stands in. No runs, three hits for the Yankees. Oh. The ball and a strike. They left the bases loaded in the first, the Yankees did. Left two on in the second. Cole's retired four straight. He struck out three along that little path. And now one off the end of the bat. Maldonado. One away. Gregorius 0 for 2 and 1 for 10 in this LCS. And the number seven hitter, Gary Sanchez, who fouled out, walks in. Well, for the Yankees, they were hoping this game could stay close. They could kind of grind out in a seven innings if that's what Cole's going. They want to try to get to the Astros bullpen. They think if they can keep it close, that their offense would win out against the Astros bullpen. Well, AJ would like to see this guy just keep going. Missed it by plenty did Sanchez, who is also one for ten in this ALCS. Playing in his 24th career postseason game, he does have five home runs, but 16 hits and 32 strikeouts. Oh. That's the pitch that Cole wants. That was thrown almost against the Rays in that region that gave the Rays so much issues with the fastball up in the upper quadrant of the strike zone. Defensive swing, Kenny. There's also a mental part to this for Garrett Cole. Very smart. There is, Joe. And Brent Strom, the Astros pitching coach, has been in the game for nearly a half century. And I asked him yesterday which pitcher does Cole remind him of most. And Strom recalled a story from his own rookie year, 1972. He gets called up to the Mets. He's watching Tom Seaver warm up just days after he gets to the big leagues. Oh. Seaver has great stuff. Strom mentions it to him, and he says, Seaver does, Clemente and Starger will let me know what kind of stuff I have today. And Seaver had that great ability to adjust during games. So does Cole. So does Verlander. Their cerebral nature is part of the reason they're so great. A strikeout here, Kenny, of Gary Sanchez on a check swing. Couldn't hold up on this pitch down and away. And that's four strikeouts now. Well, one of the thing that, things that Garrett Cole does is finishes in a good spot after he lets go of the ball. And by doing that, he can see things that most pitchers have to go on video to watch. You know, one of my teammates, uh, Greg Maddox, some of the best you'll ever see at mechanics, and seeing what a hitter does and effectively making decisions based on that. If the guy was pulling his front side or swinging off the ball. Well, that's that. And in talking with Garrett Cole, that's his ability too to be able to recognize that. Not everyone can do that. Just a simple delivery, strong in every form, and then he kind of can see how he can recognize what the hitter's doing after he lets go of the ball. Here's a 2 0 pitch. Urshela takes high. If Greg Maddox is watching, and I know he always critiques your work. No, he critiques my hair okay. more than my work. First thing he gets on. But, but was always known as a guy who could. Not just think along with the hitter, but outthink the hitter. Absolutely. And that's what Garrett Cole can do and throw 100. Yep. 3 0 pitch. That is a four pitch walk. And the third walk handed out by Cole in the ballgame. 
to bring up Aaron Hicks who has had one of the better at bats of the game for the Yankees so far. If there's any frustration that Garrett Cole will show it's going to be frustration in himself walking a guy with two outs. Nobody on in a postseason game where he's kind of limited the damage obviously to this point so. A little more uncharacteristically in the control issues for Garrett Cole. Hicks walked his first time really battled his way oh, on that's base that's five in a row that a missed. The elbow problem the tear in a ligament was facing Tommy John surgery played 59 games started the year with a bad back. Shut down from the first week of August through the end of the regular season. Ball two. Six in a row. I got to believe just watching the infielders how good they are the Astros I got to believe you can get caught up in watching Garrett Cole because he doesn't give up many ground balls he strikes out 11 to 12 a game and you've got to be on your toes and still be ready for a ball how random they may be hit to you. Well here comes a danger pitch for Cole Hicks waits seven straight and it's three and oh 99 up and in. And the guy on deck, LeMahieu, is two for two. Good job there by Garrett Cole to walk off the mound. Every pitcher has a way of clearing their head and doing things to get away from three balls in a row. Would you cut him loose? It'd be hard not to. But he hasn't played a whole lot to be locked in, right? He's just trying to feel his way back in, and he's facing Garrett Cole. Took on three and zero. Oh, it's three and one. Switch hitter with power. Tying run at the plate. All four now. Two on with back to back walks. First time Garrett Cole has walked four batters in a game this season. We're only in the fourth. And Brent Strom makes the walk out to talk to Cole. I don't think Brent puts his shoes on typically this early when Cole gets the start. A rare visit. A rare visit, but also a tough guy at the plate with LeMahieu. He is so good with runners in scoring position. Already two hits on the game, and he's already gone up the middle twice. Here's the first. First time he faced him, he took a fastball outer half down the middle, right back up the middle. And then the next time, he took a breaking ball. And that's just a guy not trying to do too much. And that's how LeMahieu is described a lot. He'll take what a pitcher gives him. And Garrett Cole has given the Yankees a chance here in the fourth. Two on, two out. A strike on a borderline pitch, and LeMahieu didn't agree. Strike two. Well, there's the nastiest slider right there. He turned it up at 91 miles an hour. He can vary that pitch between 87 and 92. And he worked off that fastball he just threw and said, I am going to break it off of the height of that last fastball. Great job. And now has got LeMayu in a two strike count. The first year Yankee waits in the 0 2. High fly ball into center. Springer back. A loud, long third out. And now the Yankees have left seven. Two nothing Astros after four. Have a moment, a reminder field caps, tees, jerseys, hoodies, and more. Get all your league championship gear and suit up with your team at the official source, MLBshop.com.
Well we are going to get an umpire change here. We showed you that foul tip that went directly into the mask of Jeff Nelson. Last inning and uh, he's wearing a microphone so let's listen in to the exchange that took place afterward. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Jeez, yeah. oh, Louise. You okay? Yeah, I think I am. All right. Just yeah. let me know. Okay. I'm going to get a glass of water in the, in okay. the inning break. Okay. I'm good. Yeah, thanks. I just, uh, that's two, isn't it? yeah, that's two that's good two. ones. And he is not able to continue. So, first of all, you lose a real good umpire behind the plate in the crew chief. And now we're going to have a switch and see who takes over behind the plate. Meanwhile, the Yankees, John, were sending Severino back out there. Yes. For another frame, and he has to sit and wait as whoever's going to take over behind the plate, and we'll get word on that, has to go back and then change and right. put the gear on and get ready to. It's at least five to ten minute delay. There's so much that you have to do as a home plate umpire to get. A different equipment on and obviously you can't do that real quick so it changes a lot changes the potential way that the new umpire is going to see the pitching and see the strike zone Severino's delay of course this is probably his last inning but he's getting on a nice little roll so anytime this happens it, it, it definitely affects everybody uh, it's not just affecting one facet of the game so uh, who knows how the delay will how long the delay will last and with that you know who knows if Aaron Boone feels good about sending Luis Severino back out there after this delay, you would think so, but they've had Chad Green up twice now. He told us before the game it takes him about 15 pitches anyway to get loose. And Larry Rothschild is going to make sure Severino stays warm and loose. Jose Altuve jumped the first pitch with one out in the first inning of this game three and Statcast is powered by AWS and he put all five six one sixty eight into this shot four twenty into left center he did he loves the postseason he loves the moment and he loves every pitch that he sees and then in the lineup for Houston when you see all the kind of metrics that tell you what you need to know about that home run. The lineup of Houston has got a, a, a mixture of super aggressive guys and super passive guys. That's what makes them so unique. And it's why when you think about four years ago, they led three, four years ago, led all of baseball in strikeouts. And in one single year, they went from last to best. And that's hard to do. They got a lot of guys out of their batting lineup that uh, was basically striking out a lot. And they ended up winning the World Series. I think here you're seeing Aaron Boone talk about about a 10 minute delay. And that's unfortunate because that's what it takes. It's not an easy transition to get a home plate umpire uh, 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 dressed up and ready. You have to wonder what these fans at Yankee Stadium think. I don't believe they made an announcement, but right now they're looking down in a 2 nothing game in the fifth inning of an ALCS matchup that swing third game. And the outfielders are going out to the pen. And uh, Aaron Boone came out and told his infielders to get off the field. And I think fans are calling friends at home. There you go. That's exactly what happened. What's going on? And that guy told his friend, and he went, oh, okay. <laughs> I think it would uh, probably do well to make an announcement here at the stadium, but we're going to flip your mic on, John, and you can tell the crowd what's going on. You ready for that? I'm ready. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we're going to take a break. When we come back, we will uh, continue. Top of the fifth, 2 nothing, Houston. Al, 2, two how, nothing. How did they know that they were going to be the ones that hit homers and, and do those interviews? Magic. Wow. Just the magic of editing. That's unbelievable. By the way, as we play here and get ready for the start of the fifth inning, the National League Championship Series continues tonight. In D.C., the Cardinals and the Nationals, the Nationals going for the sweep. That's on TBS. And then tomorrow, if there is a Game 5, Cardinals and Nationals, and they will get underway at 4 Eastern. 
on TBS. How about this? What these guys have done, and the Cardinals have two runs scored over three ball games, and they are getting just shut down by the Nationals pitching. That's what made the Nationals the scariest team once they punched a ticket in the wild card game, a scary team to play against because of those pitchers. I mean, it's similar. You've heard people say in hockey, all you need is a hot goalie. Well, in baseball, you get a hot pitching staff, and you can. Ride them to the end, and right now that looks like the case. So they announced shortly after we went to break the entire umpire rotation, and that was helpful. Kerwin Danley is going to move from second base to the plate. Jeff Nelson will sit the rest of this one out. Dan Bellino stays at first. Mark Carlson at second Marvin Hudson moves from the outfield to third base Corey Blazer stays in right. And there is no left field umpire. For the rest of this postseason game. Still one more than you get during the regular season anyway. Well the delay is going to be much longer obviously for Garrett Cole than it will be for. Severino and mm, I would think at about 15 minute mark. Or more, it's up to each pitcher on whether or not they want to even go into the cage and throw a little bit, which you can do because most clubs have that access right there. And but Garrett's pretty calm and everything he's doing, just sitting there taking it in in a two to nothing game. That I'm sure the Astros feel like it could be eight to nothing when he's on the mound. It's just the Southern California vibe right there. Yeah, that's, I guess that's so. Newport Beach in an Astros uniform, <laughs> chilling. Fist against the cheek and hanging out, waiting for the change. This is a study in how fast Kerwin Danley can get the home plate umpire gear on. I'm trying to remember when it happened to us in the World Series. It happened where you had a, a, an umpiring change, and and certainly it's it, it's never something those guys obviously want to have to deal with because they lose one of their guys, and then the delay like this happens. Baseball, unlike any other sport, it might affect another sport a little bit more with the kind of Way that adrenaline and emotions being baseball, not necessarily much as, not as much. Creatures of habit, you just try to figure out different ways to uh, pass the time. It more has to do with the starting pitcher who's in the game, and he kind of can lose his feel when you're sitting around not doing much. That's not Kerwin Dam. That is not. So his gear let's see he would have worked the plate here on Thursday. So all these guys travel with all their gear just in case. And we are it's going to be a hero's reception for Kerwin Danley when he pops out of that tunnel. Here at Yankee Stadium. Kind of like waiting for a plane and just waiting for the stewardess to get there so you can get on and go. The flight attendants. <laughs> flight attendants. Yeah. Right. Old man. <laughs> so before we see Mr. Danley and continue this ball game, we'll give you a quick word from Old Dominion. Old Dominion consistently goes the distance to be number one in customer satisfaction. Old Dominion, official freight carrier of Major League Baseball. Well, if you just joined us, it's uh, just after six o'clock or almost straight up six o'clock here in the East. A Budweiser game summary. Jose Altuve, a no doubter into left center field, 420 foot home run. It gives him 12 now for his postseason career, fourth this postseason, leading baseball. You were right. Josh Reddick went into the second deck in right. In the second, and then there's the work by the two starters, Garrett Cole, four. Shutout innings on three hits. He has walked four, and Severino has seemed to get better as the game has gone on. But he gave up those two early home runs. While we are waiting, we're going to put the uh, pregame crew to work. Kevin Burkhart, guys, it's all yours. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, let's talk about this game, fellas, and, and let's talk about Garrett Cole and the Yankees. You know, maybe he's off 
just a tick. They've left seven on here. They've had some opportunities. How do you assess what you're seeing there? Well, Gerko, he has been good. I don't think he's been great. I think the Yankees have had their chances. But when you get opportunities, we mentioned in the pregame, the first 30 pitches, the Yankees indeed have an opportunity. They just have not capitalized yet. Well, be honest with you, he, he just has been he is who he is. I mean, this guy is an assassin. I mean, he, you, you got opportunity to score run against him, and he do nothing but attack you. That's how he's been doing now, today, and all this game that he has been able to, to seize. I mean, this guy is more of what he is. Hey, Frank, your mic's not working. You use that one. There you go. I think both these guys are a tad off. I think the full weight start, you know, it's got both these guys off their routine. They were slow to, to get to the start position. You can tell, and uh, especially, sorry, uh, Severino, he was off, big time off. He didn't have that adrenaline we saw in Minnesota. Cole came out. Yankees had an early chance, and they did not produce. You know, from that side, though, from the other side, you talk about Severino. It, it looked like this could be a disaster in the beginning, right? I mean, it, 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 it kind of felt that way, but yet it's only two to nothing. He's done a nice job settling in. Same thing happened in, in, in the game in Minnesota in yeah. the LDS. He got he built his own mess. He got himself out. Two runs. It looked like he would have given up five, two. Very nice start. That last two innings have been really good. The last thing he needs is a break because he has good momentum working right now. I don't really like his batting language the first couple of innings he looked a little insecure hanging his breaking ball I mean the, the Houston Astros caught in a couple of runs against him but then let it um he kind of attached himself to what he normally is and boom he's getting the result yeah I texted my boy Duntra Willis who's in the train station back home he said uh, after he gave that home run up on that first pitch he really got a little shell shot and tried to overthrow so that's what the D train said I'm gonna stick with that as a former pitcher he knows what's going on mentally with most pitchers give it a mic man <laughs> Frank doesn't have a mic. It's one of those days you got to roll with it, baby. You know, one thing that was interesting about Severino to watch in this inning, the first 60 pitches, he had eight swing and misses, all seven on fastballs up. To me, there's an indication that Astro was picking up something. Maybe Severino made the adjustment. Well, they did that in the first round, right? I mean, against Tyler Glass, that was a big story. They got out of early, so very similar here, but obviously something changed, and he settled in. We'll see now if he actually comes back out. I know we were walking up to the set. He was initially out here, uh, and then they had Chad Green warming up a couple times, so I honestly can't tell from here who is coming into the game. Poppy, for if you are in this lineup tonight, you know what? They're getting ready to play. Guys are back on the field. Oh, they're getting ready to play. Right now, go back to Joe, Joe and John. My boy. Play ball. Joe. All right, guys, thank you. Yeah, it is Severino, and we'll see how he gets along. And I think you brought up the best point of all of it is also Garrett Cole, and his time away from the mound is extended. Yeah, he has the longest time, and certainly we'll see if he chooses to go throw a little bit while his team's batting. Well, nothing wrong with that as a mid 90s fastball goes right by the bat of Jose Altuve two three four hitters. We had about a 17 minute delay. Altuve then Brantley then Bregman left side Gregorius. Low throw but out. I think those guys out on the studio set are seeing the same thing you're seeing which is. As it's gone on Severino has got better and better and better and now he's knocking on the door of 100 pitches but he's locked in he is locked in and again I said it in the third inning any inning he gets or outs he gets beyond the third inning is going to help the, the New York Yankees navigate the rest of this game at two to nothing they feel like they can win the game with Cole pitching and hopefully not going nine innings. Here's one into center that's going to drop for a hit for Brantley, and we'll see how long Aaron Boone will stick with Severino. Boone is one step up and pauses with Bregman delaying, looking over at Aaron Boone and saying, well, is it going to be Severino or Green? And the answer right now, it looks like. Is Severino with Kerwin Danley taking over behind the plate? Bregman is struck out, grounded out. And 
that bounces in. Goes without saying any more runs. Becomes that much more difficult against Garrett Cole who's sitting there and. Waiting to head back to work. The reason I was so intrigued and couldn't wait to do this series is because beyond both teams being great. It was a different style of how they were going to get it done and for the Yankees it's all about how many innings they get out of their pen and whether that is the reason and or the reason they weren't able to win because to cover that many innings and nobody knows what tomorrow is going to be like because tomorrow the weather doesn't look great don't know what that's going to be it definitely plays into Aaron Boone and AJ's either strategy change or game plan that they're utilizing to try to nail down a victory. I'm told that just a moment ago Garrett Cole grabbed his glove and went underneath with the ball and uh, you would have to believe going to the batting cage. Yeah he go and throw and you just you never want your arm to get cold or not from it being hot you, you're, you're out there you're you're used to the rhythm and then you get this big delay and you don't want anything to cool down so you go throw and that is not a big deal anything but, but beyond. 40 45 minutes that becomes a big deal. That's a rain delay type scenario. We'll get a number on him when he finally gets back out there is that misses for ball three. And Bregman. We've seen him cut it loose on a 3 0 count already. He just has such discipline and. So have the Astros shown the discipline on that change up off of Severino. Does he swing. Didn't get a chance and now. A single a walk and that's it. In the end. As Aaron Boone makes that slow walk out. That's walk number three to go with six strikeouts the two home runs. Mixed into the five hits he allowed. And Chad Green will take over trying to keep his Yankees in the ballgame. Severino gets into the fifth can't finish it. Pitching change here in game three. WWE super fan and five time all star Adam Jones joins the show. As Chad Green joins the ball game with two on. One out in the fifth and Yuli Gurriel at the plate. The numbers the last 15 outings including the postseason. Have been. Fantastic. And he was good in game two. There's one into center field over to grab it is Hicks. Runners stay put two down. And you can make the argument that Chad Green is their most valuable reliever. I mean he has pitched in almost every inning probably this year. Started games finished games. And he's going to pitch a lot if the Yankees make a deep run. And you just wonder it makes me think. Was he going to be tomorrow's starter. And in the game tonight. With the game being close. And the iffy weather. He may eat up some innings. In this game. Here's your Don Alvarez with two on two out. And a ball upstairs we haven't really talked about. It's in the conversation that tomorrow's game could get. Postponed to the next day. Because of weather that's supposed to hit. Midday. And rain a lot in this area. Here's a 1 0. Alvarez fouls it straight back. And if the weather were clear, Green has been the guy that's made the opener role work for Aaron Boone. The Yankees are 11 and 4 in games that he's opened. But here he is, and Aaron Boone said before the game, I'm forget tomorrow. I, I got to try to win tonight. And that's why Green's in the game. Yeah. But who knows tomorrow could be an off day if the weather doesn't cooperate with game four. Here's a one one pitch with two on two out. And the reason I say that is is the fact that. In game two he was dominant and then took him out. And out of Vino's first batter he faced. Ended up being the game tying home run. 
He went two perfect innings with two strikeouts. 2 1. There's a strike well framed by Sanchez. And Green trying to strand the two runners on. He just inherited. will go by the way the home plate umpire Jeff Nelson so nice to wear the microphone for us tonight left with a concussion don't know if he's still at the ballpark or went back to the city but we obviously wish him well Erwin Danley behind the plate runners will go in the three two on the way struck him out Chad Green does his job again now the Astros have left seven as the Yankees have halfway through game three Astros up by two. Setting. Nighttime rolling in in the Bronx. Yankee Stadium two nothing. Garrett Cole Aaron Judge and a ball down and away. A 32 minute delay for Garrett Cole. Judge pops it up, shallow center, and Altuve, they let Altuve wander way out into the outfield. And he's looking like, hey, any help? One out. Yeah, that wasn't an easy play as it looked like it was going to be off the bat of Judge, but he had a hard time seeing it. Did Altuve in this sky? It's the tough time of the sky right now. It's that twilight sky. Yeah, he couldn't see it very well. So a 32-minute pause from Garrett Cole's last pitch in the bottom of the fourth to his first pitch in the bottom of the fifth, and zeros. In the most important category for Houston. You see him right there kind of squatting into his legs. Oh. For Garrett Cole, you're going to throw off your powerful lower half. And every once in a while, when you're sitting, you got to wake everything back up. He probably went through in the cage just a little bit, but it isn't the same as getting back out here in a world in an eight American League championship game. You saw, I think Gardner just assumed that second pitch was a ball, then was surprised. New home plate umpire. Oh. And a ground ball to the right side. Guriel to the bag, and he beats Gardner there, two down. And the batter will be Encarnacion, who is the DH, and struggling to find his swing. Postseason overall, 174 in this series, 0 for 10. I could do that for about 30 seconds and then that's it. Yeah, that's less because you rotator cuff. <laughs> horn <terrible>. slip. <laughs> Here's a strike into Encarnacion. He has that little kind of parrot on the arm look when he's going around the bases when he hits home runs and he hits plenty of them. Eight straight years of 30 or more. But just doesn't look quite locked in right now. No, he's faced some really tough pitching too. He's a professional hitter, and and certainly from series to series, when you face the guys that he's going to face in this series, being a right-handed hitter, Cole and Verlander will make you feel uncomfortable. Giancarlo Stanton, Stanton. is dealing with that quad injury in his right leg so he's unavailable again in this game he could pinch hit but not in the lineup Ken Rosenthal and that lineup was made before Giancarlo got to the park right and once Aaron Boone spoke with Giancarlo Stanton he made the decision immediately he pulled the plug said nope we're not going to do this thinking about the rain tomorrow maybe an extra day he can get but the Yankees are playing short 
Here's one toward the corner, and Carnacion is going to dig for two and stand there with a two-out double. Stanton pulled that quad in his first at bat in game one. Later, Homer to the ball game, didn't play game two, not in there tonight. And that's got to feel good for Encarnacion, who's been searching for it here lately. Yeah, absolutely. Three of the last four innings, two outs, nobody on, and some traffic on the bases for the Yankees. So if you're Garrett Cole, you don't mind some of that happening, especially with two outs. After he started the game first and second, nobody out. He's now got another situation with two outs. Torres, the right guy for the Yankees. 0 for 1 with a walk is Glaber Torres. He walked to load the bases in the first, and Gregorius grounded out. He struck out to end the third. A run here in this place would erupt. Maldonado wants to go through the signs again. Canacion's going to try to get the biggest lead he can with two outs. There's not a lot of speed at second. A hard time getting together. Yankees are 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position in this game against Cole. They've left seven. You know, the one thing you never see anymore from pitchers and the ability to change signs is with their glove. And what I mean by that is you get the sign and then with your glove, you either wipe below the belt to subtract wherever that number is or above the belt to add no way as a baseball team with a runner on can you decode those signs if pitchers went back to that 1 0 oh. throw down to second and back easily as Encarnacion we talked to Maldonado about that very play before the game and with the shift and Altuve nearer the bag it's an easy throw for Maldonado if the runner wanders too far. All Altuve has to do is just push forward. Tying run at the plate. 22 year old Torres waits and fouls it. Yeah, the only downside with that play that I see is if a pitch is close, you take away a potential strike because you're jumping out of the box behind the plate. Not really giving the umpire a true look at that. Count went to two and zero. Oh. Now it's still a hitter's count in Torres' favor, two and one. Two one. Oh, he had a rip. Well, the Yankees are doing everything you need to do minus get a run on the board. There has only been one clean inning for Garrett Cole. We already talked about the 30 minute delay, so that's like losing an inning of a potential time that he could be out on the mound. Even though he didn't throw any pitches, that 30 minute delay has an impact. Eighty four pitches. There have been 12 foul balls by the Yankees as they've tried to make. Garrett Cole worked for these outs. 2 2 pitch. Another one. 99. The other thing I found interesting with Garrett Cole and Maldonado is the fact that Garrett does not need to see a high strike zone target. And it's rare because most pitchers are sight oriented. They want to know where they're going. Maldonado said, I can have a low strike zone target, but know that I can go up and get that pitch a lot easier than it is to go up and down to present it for a strike. So Cole's very. Comfortable without seeing a high strike zone target. Cole stepped off, so now everybody resets. Mature at bats by Glaber Torres and the counts full. It's unreal. It really is. I don't think you can put into perspective for the viewer at home. This young guy commands so much respect when even pitchers have them in the pitcher's count. Hard to put him away. Of course, there's a base open. Dini's on deck. 
Runner at second, two out, 3 2 pitch. Spoiled it. And that's an example of with two strikes. Torres trusts his hands. Doesn't care about the leg kick as much with two strikes. He said, I have good hands. I can get to the ball. Yeah, you've got to be pretty confident that you aren't going to let the moment and the crowd and the adrenaline get to you and, and really cause you to overswing or overstride. Breaking ball up and in. And Torres works a walk. Five walks in the ball game by Garrett Cole. Now, if you're AJ Hinch, you know that the way this game's going, you can't depend on your big guy to take you eight, nine innings. So, here in the fifth, you're looking at maybe two more tops. But you're just hoping he gets you through this inning clean, and that 30 minute delay has no bearing on the impact of this inning. Another chance for Gregorius, two on, two out. High fly ball into right. Back at the wall, it is caught to end the inning. Just got under it. And came within a matter of feet of putting the Yankees on top of Cole and the Astros here in the fifth. 2-0 Houston in game three. Sixth inning now, 2-0 game. Astros have led with that score since the top of the second, and Didi Gregorius gave this Yankee Stadium a rise. Here's a fly ball into right, easy for Judge against the new pitcher, Tommy Canely. Let's see the reaction of Garrett Cole. Anytime a ball goes to right field here, you hold your breath. And anytime it gets close to the wall, you're reminded <laughs> of the mayor. Yeah, Jeffrey Mayer. The Orioles. The Yankees at Old Yankee Stadium. Oh. And as can only happen in this great city, he became an instant star. Yep. Here's Josh Reddick. He homered his first time, popped up his next. Dealing with Canely. He was good in game two as well. That's oh. a strike. He was. He's got a fastball up in 90s, 98, 97, but he loves that power changeup. Almost acts like a split when it's going good. 91 90 mile an hour change speeds. But again the Yankees are going to have to use multiple pieces in a situation where they're not winning. This is a formula and a team that when they're winning these kind of relievers are usually in the game. But for Aaron Boone. He's trying to keep the game right there and hope his offense. Here's a fly ball into right center field for judge. Yeah, I hope his offense can catch up. One for three is Josh Reddick, and the number nine hitter Maldonado walks in. I know they weren't used a lot in September, and I know they're fresh. That's not where I'm coming from when I say pitching in every game in a best of seven series works when it's shorter. But when it's longer, and the potential now that you could lose that off day in between game five and six. That means four in a row. And if you're just joining us as Maldonado takes a strike bad weather in the forecast for tomorrow and if tomorrow is canceled then. The off day comes tomorrow. Then game four would be. On Thursday game five would be the next day and Friday here's a fly ball into left. Back on the track at the wall and caught. Canely reacted. He thought that ball might leave. Maldonado has hit two to the wall and left.
One went for a double. This one goes for the out. Bottom of the sixth inning. Two nothing Houston. Garrett Cole has tied his career high with his five walks. Bottom three in the lineup for the Yankees, down by two, Sanchez, Urshela, then Hicks. Only other time he's walked five in a ball game, Cole was June of 2018 against the Rays. We're a long way from 2018, and we are a long way away from June. This is usually the area where as a starting pitcher you start smelling it. You got to get to the sixth inning. And put your team in a situation where you can get a couple quick. You got to reset yourself and get a quick inning here and then you think you can go a little deeper. One hundred miles an hour on pitch number ninety two. I can see 92 miles an hour on pitch number 100. Boy, he can just maintain another foul by a Yankee hitter. By the pitch count this season, after 75 pitches, he gets better statistically. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. When you get to that level where you start knowing the difference between smelling that end is near and putting a exclamation point on your outing but the Yankees have been stingy and had a bunch of foul balls and really kind of worked themselves into a higher pitched count than Cole and even AJ would like to have at this point two and two the count Sanchez trying to get on for the first time in the ball game. Late swing and a miss and strikeout number five for Garrett Cole. And Sanchez continues to search at the plate. That was so nasty. He's sitting back trying to expect heater and then he just kind of waves at it on that knuckle curveball. Hoping he could have fouled it off. Done something. There's that spike grip where the pitch has got a tremendous amount of spin and thrown really firm. Number eight man is Urshela. Strike one. One hundred eighteen pitches in game two of the division series for Garrett Cole. One oh seven in game five. Two wins and all those pitches accumulated twenty five strikeouts. A one pitch. Jammed him, and that's a foul ball. Can anyone get there? Bregman, what a play. Got a good jump, and on the dead sprint, catches it for out number two. And you see where Garrett Cole was. He was trying to get to that position to get the out. Watch this. He's going to get over there just in case. But Bregman, this ball is so inside. Look how it shatters the bat. No easy play for Bregman. Well, here we go again. Two outs, nobody on. And in three different occasions, he's either walked the Astros, or I'm sorry, the Yankees, or given up a hit. One of those times it was to this man. It happened back in the second, then it happened with a man on and two out. In the fourth, two walks for Hicks. And pitch counts really have gotten overblown over the years. It's not about the number, it's about the amount of stress that that number has. So at 110 pitches in a relatively clean game, it doesn't mean as much as traffic on the bases, having to get out of jams. All of a sudden, your effort level and attention to detail goes up. Two and one A.J. Hinch before the game said you know it's just hard to take Garrett Cole out of the game forget what the pitch count is with his stuff he's so good deep into games he said it's not an indictment of my bullpen but who are you going to bring in that's throwing the ball better than Garrett Cole <laughs> right there Maldonado 
got him on a throw back. It stung his hand. 2 1. Out of play. Here it is. Maldonado's got a cannon, right? So he gets this. Watch how quick it gets back to Cole. And it catches him right in the spot where he's like. <laughs> he actually had a little smirk afterwards, but. Two out, nobody on. Hicks trying to extend the sixth. 2-2. Two, two. Got him looking. Strikeout number six. Garrett Cole pitching like Garrett Cole. Two home runs by the Astros early, and they still lead 2-0 into the seventh. Adam Ottavino is the fourth pitcher of the night for the Yankees. Severino, Green, Canely, and now Ottavino. Game number six of this postseason. He jams Springer, and that's fouled off to the right. With Zach Britton getting loose for the Yankees out in their bullpen. First batter faced. See the difference with Adovino compared to the others in the first batter he faced in game two. The man at the plate, George Springer, went deep with one out in the fifth inning to tie the game 2 2, which is where it stayed until the Astros won it in the 11th. A one pitch. I, I guarantee you, Springer had to think there's no way he's going to throw me a first pitch slider after I hit it 420 feet. So I'm selling out for that fastball, but that fastball was in and jammed him. I've always said even if a guy knows or feels like a fastball is coming a well placed fastball is either going to be a quick out or a swing and a miss. One one from Adovino. That's strike two. Yep. There's that breaking ball and that one goes down. One ball and two strikes. Adovino brings it home to Springer. 0 for 3 in the ballgame. Oh. What makes Adovino so tough is the fact that he's so big and throws across his body. So it almost looks like he's throwing behind the right handed hitter when he throws that breaking ball. And the tilt he has on that sink, sinking fastball makes him doubly tough. 2 2 pitch now. Altuve, then the left handed hitting Brantley, and that's why Britain is getting loose. Top of the order for the Yankees in the bottom of this inning against Cole. Mayhew, Judge, Gardner. Walk to start the inning. Opportunity for the Astros as Springer reaches for the first time tonight. T Mobile is introducing its newest, most powerful signal ever. No signal goes further, no signal is more reliable. Whether you're home or away, T Mobile is with you. There's the numbers 15 batters face, 15 hits, three walks. And three earned runs, not what you expected out of a guy that dominated through the year for the Yankees. Born in New York City, out of Vino, first year in Yankee pinstripes. Issues a leadoff walk here in the seventh. Now here's Altuve. He's going to have a hard time holding runners with the way that he delivers the ball to the plate. See if the Astros take advantage of his slow delivery at some point and let Springer loose. Springer stole a base against Tampa Bay in the division series. Had six during the regular season.
There he goes. Base hit right field. Springer goes on to third. Well done by Altuve in his first and third with nobody out. A walk and a single through the wide open right side of this infield. And that's with that pressure, which you don't see a lot of teams run. And a guy at home plate that can, can command the bat better than anybody. Perfectly done. And now a lot of pressure on the Yankees as Aaron Boone is going to bring in Zach Britton. So nobody was extended after Severino. Green went two thirds. Canely one inning. Adovino faces two batters, gives up a walk and a hit. And with Brantley coming up, Zach Britton is coming in. Opportunity for Houston up 2 0 in the seventh. As the lefty takes over, with Bregman to follow, then Guriel, who actually prefers hitting against right handed pitching. Great bat control. You don't win three batting titles without being able to control the bat, and that was well done by Altuve. Absolutely. Second baseman goes over to cover. There's nobody there. He gets the perfect, perfect pitch. And even if he swings and misses, looks like Springer was going to steal the bag. And now the right guy for the Astros is up against one of the toughest left-handers in the game in Zach Britton. Brantley makes contact a lot. First and third, nobody out. A strike. Springer by the way you can see him hopping around after he got to third base they checked on him made sure he was OK he was limping in game two A.J. Hinch told us nothing's wrong it was a cramp might have been that again here's the 0 1 oh. He went around, tried to check it, strike two. Well, he just threw him the two nastiest inside sinkers that Britain had at his disposal. You can see it's a ball, but it's hard to recognize. Now Britain shouldn't throw a strike here in the next two, but it'll be up to the discipline of Brantley. He can stay off of it. All he's got to do is put it in play. It's three to nothing, even if he hits into a double play. Britton delivers low. These situations across baseball over the year, we have our averages, we have all that, but the guy who is anxious and tries to get the ball in the air and hit a three run homer is going to strike out more than the guy who uses his mechanics, his hands. And doesn't have a selfish at bat. Now the one two to first LeMayhew has the runner Springer hung up. He's waiting for Altuve to get to third. Both runners advance and Springer will have done his job second and third one down on the fielder's choice. What a great job by Altuve and of course that's probably the only spot you can hit it for Brantley but now it's second and third instead of the situation watch this again it hit firmly at LeMayhew now once Springer knows he's caught Altuve just never changed stride at all and got to third base which will now result in a bases loaded with one out and a walk Bregman it goes three five two on the fielder's choice but great base running they do a lot of the little things well the Astros and Altuve's right in the middle of it again and both Altuve and Brantley took that extra base first base open so they intentionally walk Bregman and the bases are loaded for Yuli Gurriel strike one. John you've talked about how Guriel has those reverse splits and actually likes to hit 
against right handed pitching better than left. He does his approach and the way the ball comes in at him off a right hander. Everything about his zone speaks to he loves the right handers. Britain. Oh. You see the Yankees going to kind of play it. Depending on how hit hard the ball is hit. They'd like to turn two for sure. Good speed at third. He'll be going at the crack of the bat. Here's a 1 1. And a nice job by Sanchez. He may have gotten an assist from the home plate umpire, Kerwin Danley. I think it got past Sanchez. Let's look. Spiked the sinker, or actually the slider, sorry, and it caught him right in the chest protector. This is a tough task now for Guriel against a great ground ball pitcher in Zach Britton, trying to pick out a sinker that you can lift to get to the outfield. Here's a 2 1 pitch. Guriel. This one gets away. Everybody advances. It's 3 0 Houston here in the seventh. A wild pitch. Scores Altuve. Well, his speed at first and instincts. This is another spike pitch. This ball absolutely eats up Sanchez. Of course, he's a bigger catcher, and it would be easy to say it's easy just to slide over and get your chest protector in the way of that. But it wasn't so easy, and it bounced up over his shoulder. Infield comes in, 3 1 pitch is fly down the right field line, slicing foul, full count. Altuve just always seems to be right in the middle of it for the Houston Astros. The MVP of the league back in 2017. Such a big part of their championship, and here he is. He's homered in this game. Little hit and run single right in the inning. Good base running. Two times over. 3 2. Fly ball into left. Brantley will tag. Gardner comes up throwing to third, and it's 4 0 Astros here in the seventh on a sack fly by Guriel. Brantley crosses home plate, and Yuli Guriel has got his first RBI of this series. Uh, super tough situation for Britain to come into. First and third, nobody out. He actually got the one out before the run scored, and then the wild pitch, and then the sack fly. That, to this crowd, and to Garrett Cole, is going to feel like they're down more than four to nothing. Still just the seventh inning runner at second two out now. Both runs charged to out of Vino. Alvarez flies into center for Hicks. How about the Astros solo shots in the first and second they manufacture two runs in the seventh and Altuve is right in the middle of all the action. What a player. 4 nothing in game three. Here's a 98 mile an hour fastball here in Paradise, Yankee Stadium, the Bronx. And so far, it's the Astros having all the fun here in game three behind one of their two aces. They won a game started by Verlander in game two. They lead this game started by Garrett Cole, four to nothing. Top of the order for New York. 
LeMayhew flies one into right. Back to grab it is Reddick. And you got to feel if you're the Yankees, you've been oh so close to an atypical game that Garrett Cole has had on the mound. You put a lot of runners on. You were maybe one hit away from changing the really the way this game and the vibe of it is. It's four to nothing in the seventh, and you've let a lot of opportunities go by. Well, they got the deep fly ball by Gregorius with two on and two out, down by two in the fifth. That sent Reddick to the wall in right. That got the biggest rise out of this crowd here as Judge is jammed. He singled through the right side his first time, struck out, popped up. And Cole will be pitching this inning like it's his ninth. You've already seen some velocity go up. In the seventh inning, it's really the top of the lineup here that could have given him the most fits. Joe Smith, the submarine oh. style right hander, is getting loose in case. One ball, one strike. So he's letting it go, knowing this is the last inning, more than likely. He won't even be able to change the mind of his manager if he wanted to. Breaking ball for a strike in the count one and two. His rhythm's better. He's back on the mound. He's got that look of a guy that has been 18 and 0 and smells another victory. Kind of rushed his delivery and almost quick pitch judge on that last one. How about another strikeout and number seven on the night. And with two out nobody on here comes Gardner here comes Tom Verducci. What we're seeing here with Garrett Cole we all know about that Cole train fastball that he has but tonight Joe you mentioned the strikeouts all but one have been on breaking pitches the slider and the curveball. Everything Garrett does is based off the fastball. He always starts that over the plate, usually up in the zone. And as he said, that makes every pitch out of his hand a competitive pitch. Where the hitter then has to decide whether that pitch is going to hold its plane or break down or cut and run the way the slider does. But you see also here, look at that velo. Garrett Cole throws harder later in the game. Amazing. One ball, one strike, and I'll say it again. If this is his last inning, A.J. Hinch, I think, would reluctantly pull him out yeah. with the way he's rolling right now. Yeah, it's hard to do. There's no doubt. One once. Gardner flies one into center. Springer back. A one, two, three inning. And that's seven straight now retired by Garrett Cole. He is in command and leading game three for zip.
Budweiser. 4 0. Houston on top as game three moves into the eighth inning. We are over in the Bronx, and Luis Sessa, who spent the entire year in the Yankee bullpen, deals, and he's greeted with a hard hit foul ball down the left field line off the bat of Carlos Correa. Fastball slider and a changeup. You see the numbers on the year. Now he's trying to keep it right at four run deficit. Bullpen at the moment for the Astros is quiet. They had Smith, the side armor, up earlier. I think Cole might have, with his body language, bought him one more inning. Look out. Good pitch, jammed Correa, strike two. He gets congratulations, but we haven't seen any goodbye hugs. Let's see if he goes to his spot. He goes to his spot. It's a good sign. Here's a one two. Off the hands again. So that decision is up to that man. A.J. Hinch. The hitting hero in game two takes a ball in the dirt two and two. There's Garrett with his 112 pitches hanging over the railing. Jacket on. Full count here on Correa. That usually means you're out of the game. Well, that doesn't mean for sure he is, but with the reliever that would come in, would might get up with one out, typically. 3 2 struck him out. Good pitch by Sessa. And a good start to the eighth inning for the Yankee right hander. The ALCS on FS1, sponsored by Old Dominion Freightline, helping the world keep promises by Indeed, the world's number one job site. And by Midas, trust the Midas touch. Indeed with one out. The bullpen is gone. Good segue by you and it's Smith again. Here comes a 1 0. Reddick fouls it back. Josh Homer, his first time up, popped up in the fourth, fly to right in the ninth, in the sixth, and bats here in the eighth. Well, I know that Aaron Boone has a lot of confidence in his bullpen, and he should. But if there's ever a situation to slot down a high leverage guy, it might come at the expense of Adovino. Because in a couple big spots already, it hasn't worked out. It's not that you shelve it and don't ever use him again, it's just maybe you find a different spot. Because they have to use so many pieces, he's going to have to pitch. He came on in the seventh inning and issued a leadoff walk, then a hit and run single to right. And was relieved by Britain. The fielder's choice. An intentional walk. There was a wild pitch that scored a run and a sack fly off the bat of Uli Guriel to make it four to nothing. And now a full count on Reddick. It's a month where stars rise and legends are born. Follow MLB on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube all postseason long to follow all the action. Well, game threes are so important, and you had your horse on the mound for the Astros. Over 70% of the teams in the ALCS that win game three. Reddick strikes out. Go on to win the series. 77 percent to be exact. Well, time will tell. Game four, there's so much up in the air. Yeah. I mean, it's worth 
more discussion with two out nobody on the batter is Maldonado not only did neither side name their starter because they didn't know how game three was going to go but we don't know if there is even going to be a game for tomorrow night because of the impending weather which I think you know of course Astros if they go up two games to one they can play it a different way but the Yankees have to play it the same way there's no options it's not like yeah they could bring back Tanaka but he's not going to pitch deep into the game no one that they have on their staff has shown the ability or the freedom to pitch much past the game plan that they have laid out and it could work I mean when it goes well it's going to be it's going to be awesome for Aaron Boone because it's going to be with the lead go to your pen shut it down They just haven't had that lead late in the game the last two. Sessa could strike out the side. The other factor in all that is if tomorrow is canceled and everything's pushed back a day, then you could go to Tanaka on normal rest. Then you could bring Paxton back on normal rest. But the four days in a row using your weapons out of the pen like he likes to. How about Sessa? Strikes out the side in the eighth. Bottom of the eighth rolls in. And it looks like New York City shining bright. On October 15th, it's game three of the ALCS, and Garrett Cole was fantastic. Gives way to Joe Smith. And the first pitch is inside to Encarnacion with Houston up four in game three. Well, the Yankees now have to put some runners on. They got to create some pressure and match up problems for A.J. Pinch as he's hoping Joe Smith can get through these right handers. That runs inside. Smith pitched in game two when an inning in two thirds one walk was the only blemish on his record in a 2 2 game while he was there. Two and one. Edwin Encarnacion had one of the four hits against Garrett Cole. A two out double in the fifth. That's a strike. He didn't agree in the count two and two. Labor Torres and D.D. Gregorius the next two. Well, Cole was seven innings and four hits, and you see the seven strikeouts. It wasn't, I mean, it's going to look super dominant, but he grinded through some innings. To speak how good he is, from about the sixth inning on, he smelled it, and he changed the way that he went about those last two innings. Of course, the 32 minute delay didn't hurt, didn't help. That's just inside, and now a full count. The reliever here you don't even care if you give up a hit just don't walk them. There's something about a walk in the postseason that just absolutely feels different than a hit and it, you never want to give up the leadoff hitter you never want to get him on base but you certainly don't want to walk. Them. Other than the closer I think the most trusted guy to the bullpen right now for A.J. Hinch is that man in the pen Will Harris. That is a tough play. Bregman changed direction on it and safe as the throw pulled Guriel away from the bag and Guriel tagged him was the foot on the base before the tag. The initial call is safe. Kerwin Danley walks down. Let's look. Does he get him with the glove. Looks like he does. Looks like he's out. Oh I don't know. By the time the back of the glove came around, they're going to look at it. Watch this again. Oh, we got him with the helmet. Yeah. You're right.
The tag on the back I think is late but he glanced off the helmet of Encarnacion as he was going by. This replay review is powered by Mitel. They show it on the gigantic screen here at Yankee Stadium. And he got him right off the top of the helmet. Right there. Well, that ball changed directions. You were right on Bregman. That made it a much more difficult play. And the throw was high, as you saw. Some credit. He was given all he had foot speed down to first. And he's out. Crowd obviously doesn't like it, but they got it right. And with one out, nobody on, the batter will be Glaber Torres. Have thrown some stuff onto the field, so we're going to have a bit of a delay here. Fourteen and a third innings now without any runs by this Yankee offense. Since they last scored in game two. In offense, it was number one in runs per game at 5.8, number four in average, number two in home runs. One home run short of the Minnesota Twins. Twins setting the all time single season record. And, and what's. Well, it's not easy for the Yankees because of the starting pitching they're facing, but they know they're going to get to see that starting pitching. Multiple times. Here's a fly ball into right back at the wall. It is gone off the bat of Torres. And the Yankees are on the board. It's four to one. They must have seen the graphic. Right on cue. Glaber has his second of this series and third of the postseason. And it looks like that's going to be it for the right hander Smith and it is well it's a three run game here with one out in the eighth inning long way to go and the 22 year old muscles up to right. Pitching change for Houston Harris coming in Nationals NLCS the Nationals up three games to nothing. They get underway in about a half hour on TBS. And then tomorrow, it's game five if necessary of that series leading into game four of this series. Weather permitting, Harris takes over and Gregorius pops up on the first pitch, two out here in the eighth. Will Harris is a trusted reliever with good reason for A.J. Hinch. He loves the way this right hander is throwing the baseball. He does. He's got cutting action to his fastball, and then, of course, what's signature pitch for the Astros that hard breaking ball that he could throw off the high fastball. So Smith gives up the home run after that replay review as Gary Sanchez stands in. Oh. On the outside part for strike one, just so. You know the rule is any part of the leather of the glove hitting the runner on his way by in this case with Yuli Gurriel 
makes it an out. The strings of the glove don't count. Even though that's leather too, but the leather portion of the glove, not the strings. And they got the call, and then the home run followed. Here's a ground ball to short. Down on a knee, Correa. What a good play. And a strong throw by the young Houston shortstop. And that sends game three into the ninth inning. That call started the inning. Home run followed. It's four to one after eight. Run game now. Two runs big, scoring by the Astros in the top of the seventh. Luis Sessa struck out the side in the eighth and goes back to work with the top of the order, Springer. Altuve and Brantley trying to keep it four to one. The home run by Glaber Torres makes him the youngest Yankee with three or more home runs in a postseason year. It always comes with the disclaimer. There are more opportunities now with more postseason games, but still a special talent, and he shows it just about every night. He does, and you can tell that. Something different about his wiring system. There's a level of maturity with him that you just don't see. 22 years old, doesn't turn 23 until December, and he really has handled himself well after getting traded here by the Cubs. When Chicago made the deal for Roldis Chapman that won him a title back in 2016. You can tell Springer's just not tracking. Almost the ball quite right. He's a little jumpy. You see him getting a little on himself on a ball that was way outside that he almost went after. They'd like to get him a little more locked in. He makes everything go for the Astros. 3 2. Sessa is still throwing hard in his second inning of work. It was the walk to Springer by Adovino that started trouble. And then he was running on a base hit to right by Altuve, first and third. Adovino was relieved by Britain. Astros eventually got two. Here's one left side. True hop for Urshela. One up. Our dynamic play of the game is presented by Han Cook Tire. And all the strikeouts by Cole, who was masterful through seven. Yeah, it was the only fastball strikeout. Everything else came on something spinning, and he was getting better as time went on. The Yankees made him work, though, I can tell you that. There are a lot of deep counts, a lot of foul balls, and the problem was they just couldn't put a point on the board. And now he's talking to his fellow pitching teammate, giving him some kind of tip on a Here's Altuve grounding to Glaber Torres, two out. And Luis Sessa, who's making his debut in this series, looks good. He does. So Cole watching with the rest of us, and we'll give you a quick word from Nyquil. Powerful relief for your worst cold symptoms. Nyquil Severe, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, best sleep with a cold medicine. That was me on the plane on the charter and play here, by the way. <laughs> I hope I didn't wake a few people up, but hey, it was a long one. <laughs> it was a long one. Game two, almost five hours, and the Astros persevered with good pitching and the 11th inning home run by Correa. The closer for the Astros is Osuna, and he is ready to go. Here's the 0 1 to Brantley, and that's in the gap in left center field. Gets down, cut off by Gardner, and a two out single. We'll bring in Bregman. We hope should come with that graphic that just popped up. Weather permitting, it'll be game four tomorrow night. And Brantley is going to be lifted for the pinch runner, Marisnik, and then they'll leave him in the ball game and put him in the outfield for defense. Brantley with a walk and two hits in this game.
So the batter is Bregman, who is 0 for 2 with a walk. The normal way, and then the intentional pass. The last time he walked up to load the bases, check on the runner, Marisnik. And again, he's been real patient. At some point, he's going to pull the trigger on a first pitch and kind of try to snatch one. Good tight breaking ball, bottom part of the strike zone, strike one. Louis Sessa opening some eyes, I would imagine. With what he's been able to do with the pressure. Retired the first five he faced, the first three with strikeouts. That's up. The Yankees in the bottom of this ninth will have Urshela, Hicks, and LeMahieu. If anybody gets on, judge. And that last name is the one that Osuna will be thinking about not having much traffic on facing him. Oh, look out. Bregman gets hit. And a painful way to get on base for the third consecutive time in this game. Batter will be Guriel right in the middle of the back. I promise you that didn't feel good. He took it, but it doesn't feel good. So Boone will stick with the right-hander, Sessa. As a left-hander, I believe it's Lions getting loose in their pen. It is. Two on, two out. Sessa deals. Strike one. Oh. He went. Strike two. Goes to show you how sharp that breaking ball is. This is uh, Guriel, who loves facing right handed pitching. Twice looks fooled. Strong debut by Louis Sessa in the postseason, trying to finish it off and turn in two scoreless innings, keeping his team in the ballgame. The one two popped up on the infield. LeMayhew. Too strong by Louis Sessa. The Yankees will need a couple of base runners to have a chance in the bottom of the ninth, down four to one. I think Roberto Osuna's in the game for Houston, leading by three. Urshela first up. A strike. The outfield all switched around now as Reddick goes to left. Marisnik, who pinch ran in center, and Springer moves to right. Here's the 0 1 to Urshela. Well, the ninth inning of any game is always sometimes the hardest to get the last three outs. The hitters lock in. The fans, of course, know that they're not playing against time, that they got. Really, a few chances to get right back in this game to tie it up. Fly ball into center. Back is Marisnik. One down. 
Osuna gets the lead man while he shakes his head here in the ninth. FS1 MLB postgame show coming up with Kevin Burkhart, A-Rod, Big Poppy, and Big Hurt. They'll break down game three. We'll have an interview or two. Poppy's got his mocha frappuccino ready to roll after this ball game. With one out, Hicks flies to center. Late break, but plenty of time for Mariznick. And the Astros are one out away from taking games two and three and leading this ALCS two to one. We have seen three home runs in this ball game. Statcast is powered by AWS. We had two home runs that were pulled. One went the other way. Altuve 420. Reddick pulled one to right 410, and Glaber Torres 371. The opposite way into the seats in right. Here's LeMayhew. Two for four in this game, trying to extend it, takes a ball. Yeah, Altuve's home run was done right before all the roll call was done by the, the fans here in the stadium. They were still going through their famous roll call of players, and before they could finish, it was one to nothing, Houston. Mayhew waits. That's foul. DJ LeMayhew with 64 multi hit games now. That's the most across baseball. We include the postseason and the most by a Yankee since Derek Jeter in 2012. Number two in the AL with a 327 average. Five for 12 in this ALCS. That is fouled right side and the Yankees down to their final strike. Garrett Cole now one strike away from running his record to three and zero this postseason. With three dominant starts. Two against the Rays including the clincher in game five. Both those starts in Houston. Now this one on the road at Yankee Stadium. One two. Left side. Bregman gloves throws and got him a dig out by Gurriel. And the Astros win game three a final of four to one. Well they had their horse on the mound. They needed one win to guarantee they would go back home. Even though Garrett Cole might even tell you afterwards in this game he didn't have ex exactly his best stuff. He had his best stuff when he needed it. A three hour 44 minute game that includes the 17 minute delay is Jeff Nelson the home plate umpire left with a concussion. And A.J. Hinch. Has his team with a win at Yankee Stadium. And these two met in 2017 the home team won every game. The Yankees got game one in Houston. The Astros get game three here in the Bronx. Cole the winner Severino suffers the loss and Osuna gets the save.